Hi guys, welcome back. Today is the day that I um, pr- start preparing for um, winter, winter protection that is. And yes, I know that um, it's still warm and we have uh, another, gee, another two months for winter. But um, preparations have to start early. We can't do it last minute. Just like anything that needs um, attention, right? It's um, very important. So, we're going to be protecting the souks. It's the souk protection program. So, yeah, that's my uh, little patent. <laughs> and what, are, what do I mean by souks? Souks means um, cold, um, sensitive plants and let's see if there's any here where i'm pointing well yes and no uh, we have a couple of custard apples in the front here young ones that don't need any protection <clears throat> a citrus a black sapote so far so good another custard apple there the one that i showed you recently that was full of fruit that's fine but i see someone there that's not fine it's a mango and even though it's a uh, five-year-old mango or it's gonna be five years old this year uh, it still needs to be pampered jeez um, let's get closer to him him yeah we have to pamper him a four and a half year old mango tree that still needs cold protection in winter unreal now if I don't protect him he will survive the tree won't die absolutely guaranteed survival however like in the last three years when I um, partially protected him that is I put a frost cloth around him but not over him um, all the growth from let's see from there right across like that right all that was dead it was it was crisp like a barbecue as if someone had put a flamethrower on there all these leaves were burnt yeah the rest of the tree down here was fine this part here and the trunk of course because I had the I had it wrapped um, on the outside so I can get away with it guys but um, I really don't want to see the tree burnt again like the last three winters especially at the top where it's doing so well um, it's a Bowen seedling mango and um, yeah I, I wanted to have every chance to, to fruit for us at least um, next summer in its fifth year and uh, for that to happen I gotta I gotta help it as much as I can so that's tree number one that's gonna need winter protection it's optional but I'm gonna do it guys I'm gonna do it for the reasons I stated it's currently at 2 meters 2.1 meters in height so just over 6 feet and uh, it's doing well right so yeah it's been in ground now for 4 years and we don't want to screw, screw it up after all this time okay let's go and have a look at the other trees that will need cold protection cold protection means frost cloth nothing else I'm not gonna do heating or greenhouse well you can't do a greenhouse on an in-ground in-ground uh, tree well you sort of can you, you make a little you know you make a little greenhouse with with a uh, different material but what I'm doing is very similar to that except uh, I'm not using um, hard materials just a soft soft frost cloth this guy here is next. That's the canistel or egg fruit, or um, it's got a few names, right? This guy here, <clears throat> I can also get away with not protecting him. But guys, it's 100%, 1000% guaranteed that he'll burn from the cold, not from the heat. He'll burn all the way down to there basically the top half of the tree will be um, powder 
it will just um, evaporate into into nothing. Yeah, that's how harsh, our our uh, mellow winters are here. We don't get um, snow, right? We don't get any snow, but five months. Our winters last for five months, from May, June, July, August, September. Five months of um, cold, not snow. Cold. Cold means for these guys. <laughs> Not for you and me, but for him. Cold means anything under 5 Celsius, under 40 Fahrenheit. And yes, we get five months of temperatures below 5 Celsius, but they're sporadic. It's not continuous. It's like um, in May, for example, we'll get maybe two or three days of five between four and six Celsius, right? And in June, we'll get another, uh, let's see, uh, four or five days, right? Around five Celsius. It's, it's borderline. It's on the border. And then in July, the coldest month of the year, um, we get temperatures down to zero Celsius, down to 30 Fahrenheit, guys, right? And it's not, not many of them. We might get one or two, one or two. And those one or two zero days is when this guy gets torched. That's all. And then in August, we might get uh, another two or three days of five Celsius. And in September, we might get one or two days of five Celsius, right? So add all that up. It's like two plus four plus four plus two plus two. Wow, 15, 15 mild freezes uh, with two hard freezes that's why we're going to all this trouble guys it's not because of snow right we're not in Siberia we're not in um, in Canada so here's tree number two that's gonna need protection and he's gonna need this protection until he's at least uh, right now he's only like two years old he's gonna need this pampering until he's around five or six years old. He's got a long way to go. Sapodia, next. Sapodia is a tough tree. This one can take the cold, but not when it's young. It's only two or three years old, right? It's a baby. Um, once this tree gets to five years old, then it can take Melbourne winter, right? But the, thing, the other thing, guys, is this is all exposed here to cold wind. There's no walls, there's no fencing, there's no, um, there's no barrier to the cold five months, right? Five months of cold wind. It doesn't get anything. N none of these trees, I'm going to show you, get any wind protection for five months. Cold wind protection. That's the problem. Even if he was five years old, he's going to freeze his ass off for those five months, guys. So yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to cover him as well, indefinitely. Because of no 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 side protection, it's not like the bananas here that are that have got some protection from the fence. These don't need protection, but there's a fence there, right? So these chaps here are exposed. They're in the middle of an open space and sky, everything. So yeah, I'm gonna have to protect the sabotia as well. And when I say protect, not only around but over the top as well. My Mesa Podi goes without saying, when you see large leaves like this, large, the larger the leaf on these subtropical tropical trees, the more it needs to be protected in winter, right? That's just a general rule. Now, Loquat has got large leaves like this too, but um, it can take the cold like a champion, unlike this guy here. This guy can't. He can get down to zero Celsius right after five or six years he's not there yet he's in year four this is year four for him <clears throat> he spent um three years in a greenhouse every winter this is this this is going to be his first winter in the ground next of course the soursop goes without saying if you know guanabana 
you know how sensitive these are to cold anything below five celsius and they're they're they're, they're, they're toast at this young age when they're big like this white sapote when you got a sour stop this big guys <laughs> um yeah it can take it can take the cold a lot more than this size but um we're not there yet for this tree to become as big as that white sapote it's gonna take 15 years 15 i'm gonna be almost 80 years old by the time this tree is that big i'm gonna be almost 80 years old if only if i protect it every winter for the next 10 years see that's how it works it works exactly like that there's no ifs or buts or ways around it <clears throat> the guava here this needs protection in the first year now it's in year four tropical we're talking tropical guava now we're not talking strawberry guava right this is a mexican cream guava first year protection only not after that this is gonna need protecting as well guys in our winter because look just like i said before there's nothing above it i don't have an ice cream bean tree over it or any any tree over it nothing and no fencing no walls nothing 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 so that's definitely gonna need protection from the five months of cold harsh wind definitely don't look at it now looks happy doesn't it looks perky looks beautiful looks pretty yeah, well, it's not gonna look like that in july i'm gonna show you what he looks like in july in july he's gonna look like someone came here with a knife and slashed it <laughs> slashed into a million pieces if i don't protect it if i protect it it'll be fine all right this one here is the most cold sensitive out of all the ones i just showed you he's more sensitive than everything i have in this whole front garden everything every tree every single tree this one is the the most sookiest <laughs> he's the number one sook and this guy um is called abu right and he's doing really well he had some uh aphids on him a few days ago i had to wash him off gently without breaking without breaking these tender young leaves right tender <clears throat> so definitely need to protect him and by the way this guy's going to get a double protection that means we're going to go around the uh, mulberry bush you know the song around and around the mulberry bush we go we're gonna go around the abu bush we're gonna go around twice around this fella maybe three times because this this guy doesn't fool around he sneezes he will sneeze when the temperature gets but when it gets exactly to five celsius when we have five celsius he'll be sneezing continuously day and night so we're gonna wrap him like a baby like a little baby in a, in a bassinet and then we have uh, these guys here that are much more cold hardy than Abu. <clears throat> but because they're young and they've only been in the ground two months, it's going to need protection, just like the Bowen mango I showed you. This is a Kensington Pride seedling, right? And it's so happy. Look at this. This is what tropical fruit trees look like when it's warm. See how happy he is? <laughs> in june and july they don't look like this do you huh tickle tickle you don't look like this in june july do you he looks like crap he looks like this see this 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 prettiness looks like this dead 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 stem if i don't protect him if i protect him he'll be fine so yeah he needs to be protected too and so do his, tw his twin brother. I've got two of them. This guy. <laughs> right? Two months in the ground. Not even two months. Maybe six weeks. Right? He's going to... And look how tall he is. So we're going to... I'm going to have to sort of 
do some work, right? It's like one point, how tall are we? 1.8 meters. 1.8 meters, guys. Here comes a cockatoo. I know, he's on that big tree up there. And talking about big trees, check out my carob. It's over three meters in height. But um, too little, too late for uh, being an overhead canopy for these young sooks, right? I mean, it's done great considering it's only three years old. Look at, look at that three-year-old three tree. <laughs> huh? In three years, he's grown, he's grown over three meters. It's three and a half meters. Beast. This is a beast tree. Man, you can throw anything at this and it doesn't even feel it. It's just like a plum tree, right? See these plum trees? They drop their leaves. The carob doesn't drop its leaves in winter. It's a champion. It can take, it can take anything, anything. Unlike the mango. The mango can, can take anything too. Once it reaches 10, how old? 8, eight to 10 years old. That's when a mango becomes a champion like a carob. You saw my glen, right? I don't protect my glen. It's 10 years old though, guys. Okay, so that's these trees here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, almost forgot this little fella hiding in here. You haven't seen much of him all summer. This is the sweet tart. Was it sweet tart? Yeah. He hasn't made any appearance all summer. He's just been hiding there. This is from Ross Creek. I paid $120 for him. Thankfully, he didn't die. But he hasn't grown in how many months? Four? I think I've had him four months. Well, he's got all these new leaves at the top. All those leaves are brand new, right? But he hasn't grown in height. He's still a little pipsqueak. <laughs> 20 inches 20 inch mango tree grafted so yeah I have to protect him even though he's got a lot of protection from the bacon avocado from the cherry moya from the shepherd avocado and all these bananas and a fence there's a fence there too and a huge 25 year old camellia tree from my neighbor right all this protection i'm still gonna cover him 120 dollars yeah next another ross creek special ross creek nursery in queensland this is the okay what is he the black gold jackfruit, right? Pips, another pipsqueak. Hey, Ross Creek, your trees are pipsqueaks. <laughs> I'm just kidding with you. But yeah, very slow growing. Uh, he's definitely going to get protected. He only just woke up. By the way, I've had this for four months as well. I got him in uh, November, December. And now it's almost April. He just woke up a couple of weeks ago. See these leaves, how they're new? One, two, three. Three leaves in four months. That's it. That's all he, all he has to show for himself. Wow. How's, and, and that's with hot weather. <laughs> that's with summer weather. You know why, guys? You know why he hasn't grown? Even though everything is perfect here, we haven't had enough rainfall. That's why we haven't had any rainfall. Jackfruit needs rainfall, not chlorinated tap water from the city. He hates tap water, right? It's just to keep him alive. He's not going to grow. He needs rainfall. Just like papaya. Papaya needs rainfall too. This guy here only keeps the trees alive. It doesn't make him thrive. Tropical trees we're talking. Again, we're not talking about apple trees. Apple trees don't care what the water is. Any water, even if you pee on an apple tree, it's happy. Right? But these need rain. Rainfall. Right? 
big difference because they're tropical these are tropical tropical trees need rain so I'm gonna protect this little baby too I've got four of these four papayas the same uh, yellow variety the the one I showed you down there that was a red hybrid and it's starting to grow well now right did you see how, how well it was growing it's a bit late though it's a bit late fella the growing season is finished next week it's all over Red Rover we're gonna be entering early winter in April so um, gonna protect him too okay I think we're done in the front yard let's go to the backyard oh no I've got a couple of more sorry I've got the <sighs> hang on another yellow papaya here this one is doing great the best out of all four uh, uh, yellow varieties it's because it's got the the, the brick wall right Mmm, I'll just stop to have a quick break of these um, brown turkey figs. Wow, so good, guys. Okay, I almost forgot the driveway trees. Where we started, wax jambu definitely needs to be protected, 100%. Even though these can, can take the cold, can take zero Celsius. But again after five years four to five years not not now it's only a, a year or two old not now now it'll be dead chopsticks if i don't protect it this winter and this jackfruit look how well it's done by the way we had um the first drops of rain yesterday in six weeks and as soon as we got those few drops Look what happened to the jackfruit. <laughs> it perked right up and turned green. See, I told you, I'm not kidding when I say rainfall. No matter how much city water I, I give it, it won't, it won't look like that. It won't look like this with chlorinated water from the city. I've been watering it every single day for three months and it's never looked like that. It got five minutes worth of rain, five minutes, and look what happened. I told you guys, it's the rainfall. It's the rainfall that benefits those in the tropics, not their ingenious, um, smart methods. No, if they didn't have rain up there, all, they, forget about it. It's, it's over. The tropical dream is over without rainfall in summer. Okay, so, Acerola. Um, he'll need protection too. I protected him last winter. That's why he's, he survived. And boy, did he survive. He did great. And now he's um, full of flowers. Right? Everywhere. And he might even fruit for us. Well, I hope he does. Because the season's, like I said, almost over, guys. <laughs> um, the Manila mango that died. Well, the... Um, the graft that died left us with a rootstock and I'm guessing it's Kensington Pride I'm not sure I'm not sure what the rootstock is but it's uh, it's growing it wants to grow so I'm not gonna pull it out I'm not gonna pull out a tree that is growing and happy so I'm gonna protect him as well this winter Valencia Pride mango grafted of course Right? He's going to get protection. Look at this. Finally. At the very, 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 very end of the growing season, he pushed this out. <laughs> Thanks for nothing. Too little, too late. I mean, I'm happy to see that. I'm grateful, guys. He got, we got this and we got that little cutie back there. Two little um, pushes, right? So thank you very much. Last minute. A last minute push of growth and then, then we have another Kensington Pride seedling mango that's been pushing all summer one two look at that three beautiful beautiful flush and even now he wants a flush just a little bit here right and here so 
Yeah, I think that's about it. Yeah, we're pretty happy with this chap. Uh, I didn't protect him last winter. I didn't cover him at all. And he didn't have any cold burn. None of the leaves were burnt from the cold. What do you guys think? You think I should try again to repeat the same this winter? Look how tender these burgundy leaves are. Tender and juicy and soft. <laughs> you think I should let them go for the frost that's coming in May? Frost, be fr frost begins in May. May. Just like the cold. Yeah, maybe these will harden up before then and turn leathery. These are leathery, these leaves. But these aren't. These are like um, cotton candy. Very, 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 very soft. All right, next, another wax jambu. Another um, yellow papaya needs protection. And finally, another mango grafted. That's the Florigon, right? And this one here gave us one, two, three. Three um, flushes, or one flush of three small branches there. So that was nice. That happened a month ago. It was a long wait. Again, we had to wait three months for, four months, for, for this growth to take place. But it finally did, and we're definitely going to protect him this winter right all right we're done in the front I, I lost count how many trees that was but um i'm gonna go around and check everything that needs to be covered and count how many stakes i need these stakes here right how many of these i need what height i need and approximately how much frost cloth i need Hmm. Wow. Really enjoying these brown turkey figs. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Back here, we're going to protect. Hmm. I don't protect Longan. Longan and lychee, I don't protect. But I am going to protect this guava. Guava usually doesn't need protection. But. <clears throat> this particular guava. Is very cold sensitive. And I've lost it. Almost lost it. Twice. Twice it died. Back. To. Um, to there. See that? Twice. Two, two, two winters. I've had it for two years and it died twice. This is the Thai guava. Thai tropical guava. And um, I don't want to lose it for a third winter, guys. So I'm going to cover it. It's, it. It has the same um, cold tolerance as the red Malaysian guava. Another very sensitive guava. The Thai guava... And the red Malaysian are um, much more cold sensitive than the um, the pink guava and the white guava. <laughs> okay, so that's one there I'm going to protect. Like I said, longan. I'm not protecting the longan. That's the chompu. Look at him. Look how happy he is with the rainfall we got. Right? The five minutes worth of rain. Look what it did. All this new growth came out of nowhere. <laughs> huh? I've been watering him for six months with city water. I didn't want to grow. Guys, it's all about tap, it's all about uh, rain water. Rain, rain water. That's why in Cairns and Mackay and the Sunshine Coast, the trees are doing so well. It's non stop rain. There's nitrogen and other minerals in rain which you don't get with city tap water. Yeah, free fertilizer. Hmm, got another one, so good. Look, Lukuma, 
Lukoma? Yeah, Lukomo. Has different names. Hmm. This year is done so well, mainly because mainly because it's got shade all day from the native Australian tamarind tree, which is six meters tall up there, the one that's that's moving because of that guy. Mid afternoon sun blocked all summer, right? So. That's why he's so lush and happy. And the only reason I'm gonna protect him is because he's on canistel, canistel rootstock. Only for that reason. Otherwise, uh, Lukuma does not need cold protection in Melbourne. So that's another one that's going to get the, the cloth. <clears throat> Sugar apple. Mm. Which is related to <clears throat> Atemoya or custard apple as we say here. Definitely will protect him as well. Right? This is a major, major sook in the Anona family, same as the uh, soursop. The same uh, sensitivity as soursop, the sugar apple. And then this guy here, who just dropped a leaf. Wow, look at the size of that leaf. Holy moly, the size of my thigh. Jeez. This is the yellow mangosteen. And He's a big sook too. He will definitely need protection, right? In winter. So I'm gonna cover him as well. Yeah, in summer they do great. All right. Oh. And the Malabar chestnut, Saba nut. Let's go around the other side. Longan, no protection. They can fend for themselves. In fact, they like the cold. As long as it's not hard freezes. Right? No problem. Lychee? No problem. Again, as long as we don't get a hard freeze. Ooh, it's got new growth. And this is because of that rainfall we got yesterday. A little touch of rain, and look what it triggered. It triggered, it triggered growth. Why didn't this growth come... All that time I've been watering it with a garden hose. Huh? <laughs> Guys, um, living proof, living proof, living evidence of how, why, and when. Why? How? Star fruit doesn't need any protection. Carambola. No winter protection at all in, in Melbourne. In ground for five years. Still no fruit though. So this is the Saba nut. Or Malabar, it's doing great. It doesn't like um, direct sun. So I planted it right behind this uh, pink guava, Hawaiian guava. And uh, it's thanked me. And it's showing its, thank, its um, appreciation with all this new growth. This new growth came without rainwater. It came with city water, it was tap water. So not all the trees are the same, guys. What else? Mm. How could I forget the two biggest sooks at Fruitopia? <laughs> These two sooks. Look at all the rainwater I've given it. See all the, um, all the grass? Look. See all this grass that's grown? Because of uh, daily watering? I water it every day. But I don't mow the lawn every day. This guy. He needs a lot of water, don't you, fella? Huh? He needs a lot of water when it's hot. Uh, but the watering will stop real soon. No more water for you. He's not going to be given any water by me. Um, in April, from April to September. 
yeah, whatever rainfall gets him, that's all he's going to get. And we get a lot of rain in winter. The wet season in Melbourne is in winter. But I'm going to cover him. So any rain he's going to get, it has to come from under. From under the frost cloth. Not from the top. Nothing's going to get through from the, the top. So double wrap for him, like the Abiyu. And double wrap for his mate. Another, did I say what it was? Oh, sorry. These are two star apples. Star apple trees, guys. They survived fine in summer. Come on. Of course they did. So, yeah. The watering will end in two weeks for both of them. I'm not giving them any more water. <clears throat> because that's when the temperatures plummet. They go boom. From 30 Celsius down to 15, 18, 20. That's it. So we don't want to give them root rot. Double wrap for you too, fella. Wompy, you don't protect it at all. Treat it like citrus. Champion. And then to finish off, guys, here at the back, more trees to be wrapped in frost cloth. Yeah, it's a lot of work and cost. The cost doesn't bother me, right? It's pennies. But the work, most people would say, um, you know, the same thing. Can I pay someone to do all this? I don't want to do it. I don't mind doing it. It's fun, right? The process, the journey is more fun than the destination. That's my uh, philosophy. So, he's going to need protection. That's the... Um, um, <clears throat> Kwai Muk. I was calling him Muk, but someone told me it's Muk. So Kwai Muk, or is it Muk? I forgot. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, he's going to need um, protection as well. Of course, the Relinia is definitely going to need protection. Actually, he really doesn't. But again, like the Bowen Mango, he will survive unprotected, but he'll be burnt. The top half of the tree, that is all that there, will, will be brown, will be roasted. The trunk will be fine. He'll come back in spring like a champion. But I don't want to lose the top half of the tree, guys. Especially when I see new growth. When I see new growth like this, it motivates me to protect him over winter. Because this will die. That's going to die unprotected. That's why, guys. And so will this. All these new leaves. They'll go straight into um, Rulinia heaven. All these new leaves that are coming. See all these new pretty leaves that are ready to unfold? They're going to be charcoal in July. So that's why we cover him. Not to make sure he survives. But to make sure that he thrives. Another Sapodia. That seems to be happy with the rain we got. Coochie, coochie, coochie. Coochie, coochie, coochie. Coochie, coochie, coochie. Trying to push new growth. <clears throat> He's going to need protection. I protected him last year. I still have the stakes there. Can you see the stakes from last year? He's grown. <laughs> He's grown since... Last summer, or last winter, he's grown three inches. That's how slow Sapodilla grows in my climate. <clears throat> yeah, I think it was that high when I protected him in, in May last year. It was that high. At that height. He's grown three, maybe four inches. Uh-huh. Patience. Have you got the patience, guys? Jaboticaba, no protection at all. Another Sapodia. Of course, he'll need protection. He still hasn't grown over the um, the stake height from last winter. He's got a long way to go. <laughs> he hasn't grown. He's grown maybe one or two inches. But the the key is, guys, is that that they don't die. 
that they stay alive and they're smiling. That's a, that's a big green smile when you see them like this. And I'm happy with that. Uh, he's going to need protection. That's the latest tree I planted uh, about a week or two ago. That's the uh, monkey jack. Definitely need, need to protect him in his first winter um, in the ground. Right? He got a couple of new leaves since going in the ground last week. That one up there and that one on the side there. Of course I'm going to protect him. I've had him for a year and a half. What, I'm going to let him be toasted from frost in winter? No way! Again, star fruit, no protection. Green sapote, no protection. No protection at all. It's nothing like the uh, the um, canistel. Okay, and here we have the black sapotes. We're not going to cover those. They're in the same league as white sapote. But we are going to cover this young jackfruit. That's the Malay variety. That's doing really well. Again, a slow starter. But that's how it is, guys, here in the cooler climate. You're not going to get a, a young jackfruit like this planted one day and growing the next day. <laughs> no, it's going to take a few months for him to get any um, encouragement to grow or motivation. Right now, finally, after three, or, after three or four months in the ground, he's starting to grow. But guess what? As I said earlier, the season is finished. It's finishing in the next week. So he's definitely going to get covered, guys. And that, my friends, is the video today. Hope you enjoyed it. On what's going to be protected, covered and pampered over winter here in Melbourne, Australia. Between um, May and September. The five coldest months of the year in um, winter. Right? We don't have a five-week winter, guys. Or um, two months. Or three months. Or four months. <laughs> it's five months. So, yeah, it's almost half a year. So that's why um, it's very important to, um, to do it right. Otherwise, you're beating around the bush. Beating around the bush and uh, starting all over again from scratch. And I don't want to be starting all over again um, after five to ten years of um, doing this, right? Now, the green sapote here... He's a champion, even though it's uh, subtropical, it doesn't need any cold protection. It's very strange how the um, green sapote doesn't need protection, but the canistel does when they're uh, very, very similar, very similar, almost identical, right? All right, guys, that's the video. Uh, without carrying on and on and on and on, because I can easily do that, right? I can't help it, guys, because I'm very uh, excited. I'm very excited and passionate about what I'm doing. Yeah, we're also going to cover this young canistel and uh, that young relinia down there. This is coming. This uh, shade cloth is coming off next week. We're going to have another mini heat wave. Not really a heat wave, but. It's going to get to 30, 31, 32 maybe next week. And that's it. That's the end. That's the finale, the grand finale at the end of March of um, hot weather. And that's when I'm going to pull this down. And then in April, this won't be here. So all these guys here are going to be exposed. This canistel, that relinia, that golden soursop behind the black sapote there. Hang on, let me see if I can get in there. It's very... Uh, very tight in here I did it strategically guys this wasn't an accident the reason I planted these together is for protection to protect each other that's the golden soursop that's gonna be covered as well and so will the um, the uh, Key West Mame Sapoti there that didn't really do much but uh, I see that someone has eaten all his leaves great 
Fantastic. What a way to go. Ah, oh, you know those four leaves? All four leaves have been eaten. Uh, three leaves. Yeah. They've been eaten by some grub. So, another added difficulty to growing tropical fruit trees in a cool climate. If the cold isn't going to get them, the, the, the grubs will. Thanks, for, thanks very much, buddy. Whoever did this, I just noticed it now. Because I don't come back here. It's very hard to get in here. But anyway, guys, over and out. Please uh, like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And we'll see you again soon. Still waiting for this uh, Davidson's plum to grow. It's been there for over a year, just sitting there. Just sitting there doing nothing, but he's healthy and happy. But he's not growing. It's alright. When he's ready. Bye guys.